Mr. President, thank you. Uh, as we know, the Senate is currently considering the Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson honoring our PACT Act. This bipartisan legislation is the most comprehensive toxic exposure bill ever considered for veterans. Passing toxic exposure legislation has been a priority for Senator Tester, the chairman of the committee, and for me, the ranking member, and we want to, we've wanted to do it this Congress, and we are close to accomplishing that. Last Congress, we were able to deliver landmark mental health legislation for veterans, and this Congress, we were committed to passing long-lasting solutions that will reform the VA's process by which veterans who are exposed to burn pits and Agent Orange receive their benefits in health care. About a month ago, Senator Tester and I announced a bipartisan agreement and introduced the historic Keith Robinson PACT Act. Part of the agreement between the chairman and me was that two amendments would be considered for this legislation. I offered an amendment, not, excuse me, I offered an amendment to strike the creation of a fund which would classify over $116 billion in discretionary costs associated with the bill as entitlement spending. I believe that this untested and unique way of classifying spending lessens congressional oversight at a time of massive debt and deficits, and it sets a bad precedent. Senator Lee has an amendment requiring the Secretary to use science when evaluating presumptions establishing the bill. That amendment has been filed. Senator Ernst has an amendment requiring the Secretary to certify that with the resources and authorities provided through this bill, that there won't be a negative consequence for veterans in the system. And there are at least three amendments proposing to offset the cost of the bill, or at least a portion thereof, with spending reductions elsewhere. I'm hopeful in the days ahead that before final passage of this bill, we would let our colleagues be heard through an amendment process, pass or fail. I've also hoped that the two amendments that I expected to be able to offer would be made in order. That hasn't been the case to date, and therefore I ask unanimous consent that it be made in order for the following amendments to be made pending to the substitute amendment number 5051 by their sponsors or their designees. One, the Ernst Amendment, Secretary of VA Certification, number 5072. Two, the Lee to modify the authority to create presumptions, uh, 5048. The Johnson Amendment to pay for COVID money, Amendment number 5055. Paul to pay for this uh, legislation from USAID, number 5060. The Blackburn Community Care Amendment, number 5075. My amendment, the Community Care no Amendment, number 5064. My amendment to strike Section 805, uh, number 5063. The Marshall Amendment on Collective Bargaining, 5071. The Murkowski Amendment on Appraisals for Housing Loans, number 5069 and the Inhofe Amendment concerning Camp Lejeune, number 5094. I further ask that at a time to be determined by the majority in consultation with the Republican leader, the Senate vote in relationship to the, these amendments in the order listed. Further, upon disposition of the amendments listed, all post-closure time on the substitute amendment 5051 be expired and the remaining pending amendments be withdrawn with the exception of the substitute amendment 5051 as amended, if amended, and that the Senate vote on adoption of the substitute amendment as amended, if amended, and finally, that upon disposition of Amendment 5051 as amended, if amended, the cloture motion with respect to the underlying bill 3967, H.R. 3967, be withdrawn. The bill as amended, if amended, be read a third time, and the Senate vote on passage of the bill as amended, if amended, with 60 affirmative votes required for passage. Is there objection? Mr. President. Chair, he has none. Reserving the right to object. <clears throat> Senator from Montana. We are um, here on the cusp of doing something that really tells the fighting men and women that served in our military all around the world that we've got your back. And we are here because of what I would say a great working relationship between the ranking member, Senator Moran, and myself. And as I said in the VA committee earlier today, that, that relationship is going to continue regardless. And the reason is because in this place, there's something that's missing, and it's called trust. And, and I trust Senator Moran. We've been through this for the last year and a half, and even longer. When you were chairman of the committee, many of the bills that are in this package, you oversaw their passage out of committee. Um,
but because negotiations continue and because I still believe, even though this process is very broken, we both know that, um, I still believe that we're going to be able to come something that both of us can agree on for amendments through our leadership. By the way, we would agree on something anyway, but through our leadership, uh, that's why uh, I'm objecting to your motion. I object. The objection is heard. Mr. President, I would conclude by encouraging the uh, chairman of the Senate Committee on Veterans Affairs to use his substantial level of influence with the leaders that he described as necessary to approve the consideration of these amendments. And he speaks of the word trust, and I have great trust in his ability to accomplish the desired outcome that I have. Mr. President. Senator from Montana. Can I ask the ranking member of the Veterans Affairs Committee a question? Uh, through the, through the uh, presiding officer, he is allowed to do that. Mr. President, uh, are you asking me to throw my weight around? <laughs> uh, may I make an inquiry of the senator from Montana through the chair? Yes, yes if you I may. If I answered the question, Mr. Chairman, uh, would that be considered derogatory? <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps it's a parliamentary inquiry. I think in Montana it's considered a compliment, but... Um... You want to do the quorum or you want me to? Mr. President, I note the absent of quorum.